tree trimming, wood stacking, roof tiles, and more. All this work in hopes that the looming wildfire in the distance doesn't make us run like these giant bees did. Oh my god. Ah, they're big. That's gonna hurt. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new around here, we're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married, moved into a van, and have been chasing adventures all around the globe ever since. And now, after moving from the USA to Portugal, we'll be documenting our entire journey of building our dreams as we transform a historic water mill into our first home, not on wheels. Join us as we embark on this new and exciting phase of life. Now, let's take in a deep breath and let it out. Let the adventure begin. Bom dia, amigos, and welcome back to another episode. Right now, we can hear helicopters flying overhead to go help the fires that are still burning in the near-off distance. It has now been, I believe, five days since that fire started. And with this being our first fire season here in the south of Portugal, Drew and I both feel that we can't be too prepared. So right now he's getting the ladder and the chainsaw and we are going to trim our beloved mulberry tree because she dangles a little bit too close to the home. So we want to trim her back a little and there are a few other little preparations that we want to get underway today, just in case. So our friend Ralph over in Al Jazeera just gave us a little update. Yeah, right now it's sort of like really windy from the southeast, but with this kind of wind, you don't need another fresh fire uh, that would spread really quickly. Pretty crazy to hear what's going on over there with the winds and the smoke and the fires. Problem is that in the wind um, and the eucalyptus trees that have this oil that burns is that um, they can spark balls of fire that can be, be sent 100, 200 meters. And if someone's not there to see them and to put them out quickly, another fire Shoot. begins. That's why these fires can be so dangerous, especially with high winds. To complicate matters further, um, we have these very steep valleys. And when it gets so very, very hot, it can create its own weather system. It can create its own wind that takes things in a particular direction. The forecast is that the winds will stay from the south and will stay low. Tomorrow is a different matter. So we're just hoping that the fire brigade uh, will take control of the area that they're fighting at the moment before the winds return stronger. Let's just hope that those bomberos who are total heroes, you know, they are working day and night. Let's just hope that all of their efforts, let's hope that every moment gets better. Your tree cutter has arrived. We were just talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> let's get down to business. Look at the beautiful blue dragonfly. So beautiful. First off, we need to tuck away our little astroturf lawn here so that the branches and things don't just make a complete mess. And as you will notice in a moment, yes, I, I don't have pants on, but I do have a bikini on under this. It is hot, so that is the wardrobe of the summer. <laughs> I wanted to get that out of the way. <laughs> Let's go blow that rug off. Hercules! 
If you're like us and you have hopes of building your dream home one day, but maybe you don't know where to start, luckily there's a company called Discount Lots that offers plots of land in the USA at incredible prices. And since they launched in 2019, they have helped thousands of people buy vacant land with their fast and easy hassle-free system. Whether you dream of using your land to build a beautiful home, start profitable farming, build a campground, or whatever else tickles your fancy, their exclusive off-market listings cannot be found on any other real estate sites, and their website is so easy to navigate. Plus, they offer owner financing terms or easy monthly payments as low as $240 per month. No agent commissions, no added fees, no credit checks, giving everyone the opportunity to invest and buy land. All you have to do is visit their website. We put a link in the video description below. Choose the property you want, click the button, and boom, the Discount Lots team will take care of everything else for you. All you have to do is sign an agreement. And even better yet, using our code below, you will enjoy 10% off of your dream plot. Now that we've shared that, let's get back to taking care of our own dream property here. Look at this. This is a really impressive root that was trying to grow underneath all that. Oh, it looks like a chicken foot. <laughs> oh. Different ladders for different approaches. This one for trimming here and the A-frame for trimming under there. Say hello to our beautiful morning glories. And just wanted to show you that inside the mill, we can now see through the skylight. We decided to remove the tarp on the exterior of the window because it is not rainy season. For fire season though, we don't want any extra cloth on the exterior of the house. But we both love so much the effect that the skylight has in here. It's so cool. <laughs> And I know Drew's going to need this. I can hear the helicopter again. Guys, you know what's crazy? Remember in a few episodes back, I had taken this for repair. I actually haven't started it since I got it back from the shop. So let's hope that this coil pulls properly and it fires right up. I think somebody from the shop tightened that bolt too tight. Chain's not spinning. Uh, Dude, are you kidding? Uh, Dude. And you know what? My socket set and tools are all up to the camper. I can get them. Just for perspective. Oh, okay. I heard you got it started. I did. <laughs> oh. You know what it was? Nope. It was the breaker bar. You have to pull it back to reset it. It mm -hmm. was jammed forward to break the cable in case of a dangerous incident. Who knew? Not I. Well, I found the mother load. I'll show you guys this. Right in that hole. They're big. Those are huge. Those are Portuguese mana wars in the sky. <laughs> Look at them all right here. Oh my god. Ah! Between you and I, I don't like it. They're big. As if I thought the dangerous part was being on the ladder with the chainsaw. The bees were after me up there. <laughs> But I don't see a hive. I don't know, there's like five right here. They're all chasing me. Oh. Came down the ladder as fast as I could. <laughs> they know I'm cutting their berry tree. It's their favorite. That's true.
Those bees are no joke, guys. At least I can continue my job getting the fresh cut Ooh. over to the other side of the stream and then into our burn pile. A long way from the house. Yeah, I guess I didn't really realize how close this tree was to the house. Yeah, I at least want like a meter and a half between the tree and the house. Yeah. This will be our winter burn pile. He decided to approach it from a different angle. Luckily, neither of us are allergic to bee stings, but that doesn't change the fact we don't want to get stung. Something else that's big are these weeds. See how much they've grown? I like the size of small trees. They're taller than me. Our plan is to wait and see what kind of a river our summer stream turns into in the winter before we do any further beautifying of the banks or of our lagoon. And while mulberry trees are among some of the most fire-resistant trees, along with Mediterranean cypress, with the wooden conna ceilings and tree trunk support beams inside the mill, we didn't want to take any chances. Because as much as it's our home to love and build our dreams into, first and foremost, it's our land to protect. These plants and animals are our responsibility. Here we have quite a few dead branches. So I think it's been putting a lot of stress on its one bent trunk here. So I'm gonna take out this one that's got the big gash. Strip. Two behind it as well, actually three behind it. Trimming this mulberry tree was probably the one thing that had been on our list of things to do for the longest time. But it wasn't until the fear and presence of a nearby wildfire that we felt motivated to finally get it done. So consider this a little bump and reminder for you to do whatever important thing that's been living on your list for far too long. Nelson back for some more Google culture. Yeah. We won't be able to burn that for months. Hopefully it's nice and dry when we burn it in October. But from this angle, you can really tell how much we've cleaned it up, you know? Looks like we put a bowl right on top and cleaned up everything under. It's totally a bowl cut. <laughs> now I need a haircut. Yeah, actually you do. Not a bowl cut though, for the record. <laughs> Unless we're going back to Dumb and Dumber days of the uh, early 90s. I have to call you Lloyd. <laughs> You've had two pairs of gloves the whole time. I can't feel my fingers anymore, Lloyd. Maybe you should wear these extra gloves. My hands are starting to get sweaty. No, bees, they're coming for you. There's two. Well, two hours in and I'd say it was time spent well. Dude, what do you think? The bees are my least favorite part. Oh. But I think we did a good job. I think so. There's a far out look so you guys can see. And from this angle, we can really tell it no longer touches the roof. There it is. Got it. Whoa. How'd you do it? Hello. 
like so much. All right, I want to show you a spot up top where I think we should put some of our other extra ceramic tiles because the seal around the sky window is looking pretty rough and there's wood exposed and even like this black paper that if embers landed on it, I think it'd go poof up in flame. So yep. come take a look. Oh wait, that's not a step right now. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. All right, come take a look. Okay. gonna get down. Okay, wait. In my hand. Don't do this at home, especially not in Crocs. Oh, that's the paper. Look right here. Yesterday I took the tarp off that we put on here for a couple months and yeah, no wonder we had leaks. I think if we take the extra of these we have sitting by the back wall and lay them in rows, like maybe two rows here, and then up the sides. I'd feel pretty good about that. The wind won't blow these tiles because they're heavy. Yeah, less surface area that's flammable, the better. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty freaking bad right here. Yeah, that's that's not what you yeah. want. Mm -mm. And you can see, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, yeah. These are gonna be the tiles that we use to hopefully cover up the tar paper and wood. I got a method to my strategy. I need 28 tiles. And two figs. Oops. Perfect. <laughs> it's tasty. As I was just setting down this stack of tiles, my fig, my fig just flew off the tile and went rolling, rolling, rolling right down the canal. And I thought it was gonna go off the edge but it stopped on the last one. I gotta go get it. Here we go, down to the next level, like a cat. Oh, there you are, luscious little fig. You're still good. Mm. professional job. I matched my lines up even. They fit pretty good in there. These ones are a little crooked, but I like it. Give me a thumbs up if you like that too. I'm happy with that. Very happy. I actually miscalculated. That was 46 tiles right there, not 28. It's not waterproof, but if there is to be a fire and embers land on top, I surely feel like that window and the roof will be much more protected and ready to sustain. For any of you guys who have been wondering about the status of our fig tree next to the water mill, well, I have good news. The one I had earlier was from our neighbor's garden, but this is our fig tree here. Dude, she's a beauty, ready to be eaten. Ooh, maybe one more day. Well, we just enjoyed a quick break for lunch, and right now we're getting ready to head to town because Drew actually does have an appointment to get his hair cut, and we wanted to see if we could find some fire extinguishers somewhere, and you know, today is a really, crucial day with what the firefighters are able to gain control of this fire because tomorrow the winds will change not in our favor and so today if they can really get things under control we will be sitting in a much better position come tomorrow because last night Drew flew the drone straight up from where we are and he was able to actually see flames and he measured five miles as a crow flies from the fire to us. And while our community isn't really like getting too nervous or anything, people are starting to have plans in place and they're so sweet. They're checking on us to make sure that like we're not too scared or nervous and that we're prepared and stuff and we're feeling pretty good with where we're at. You know, Drew and I would plan to leave because all we have for water is the lagoon. That's maybe 20,000 liters? 20,000 liters, Drew? More or less. And beyond that, we would have like, what, 
our shovel to fight back the flames and we've done a good job clearing our land we don't have really any belongings other than our tools inside of the mill and so if there's any year where it's okay for us to kind of leave and not fight back flames this would be the year please let the winds and please keep us safe keep our land safe keep our friends and our community safe well okay we got a few things to do let's try to stay focused one last thing I'll say is having lived through a hurricane recovery situation, I feel much more capable going into fire season and sort of being strong through the unknowns that this brings. That's all I gotta say, you know? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Wow, that's a huge one. Wow. Got a water bag. I wonder if he's looking for a water spot to go suck water from. That's what we hope to be for them one day. We just don't have any of our water tanks or anything like that prepared, you know? It sounded like there was a second helicopter. His echoes ricocheting off the mountain canyon over here. Wow. But somebody has an appointment to get a haircut. <laughs> And we're just trying to do our best, not getting too wrapped into the anxiety that comes when things like this are going on around you. Oh, you hear the helicopter? I think there's already over a thousand firefighters now combating this. And almost 400 vehicles. It was on BBC even. I know. Ah. Before the winds change. Ugh, as I look at these eucalyptus. We didn't clear these because these are excellent for shade. At least when we park over here. But, you know, anywho, if our plan is to evacuate, we'd be fine. You look so handsome with your new haircut. And you got a nice, like, razor shave, you know? I know. I really treated myself. Ten euros. Ten euros. That's the life. And it's about time to feast. I wanted to make sure that we ate really well tonight. My dinner is always a meatless version of some sort. I have lentil noodles, mushrooms, spinach, and I'm about to top it all off with an avocado. <laughs> this is a droop board. Here you go. Here's one for the bomberos. For my homies. Ooh. The bomberos. It's going to be a lot of answer. <laughs> it hasn't moved very far today because it's been such a, um, a calm day. We had 30 mile an hour hot winds from the east, from the interior, from Spain, from the hottest parts of the, the peninsula. Uh, and that doubled the size of the fire in a matter of hours. Yesterday. The firefighters, of which there are now almost a thousand fighting this fire, in 330 plus vehicles with around 11 or 12 aircraft, are trying to contain it before the winds change. And this is the big danger we have here: is mm. that the winds, the winds are swirling around, tonight. and if it suddenly picks up and starts blowing again, That's the tonight. fire can cut off through valleys, down through areas of eucalyptus forest and pine nut forest and the fire could spread once again. So everyone's still very nervous here, but hoping that the fire brigade are doing what they can, make, taking this opportunity to try and get under control of the fire as much as they can. Thank you. And Alistair, how close geographically are the fires? Eucalyptus. I know last year they got incredibly close, right up to your hand. Yeah. Unlucky that the fire came to our valley, but uh, very lucky that more damage wasn't done. And we've learned a lot from that. There are laws in place here that you have to cut the land around your houses, uh, strim it down in the spring so that fire doesn't get to the buildings. The firefighters drop water on buildings specifically. Their main priority is to prevent buildings That's from how the being mill damaged. survived in 2017. We know there have been around 1,400 the people water on the homes. roof. We know there have been some houses... Maybe like even some guys would come beforehand, douse the house, mm -hmm. come down these roads. We'll see. I mean, even our friend offered to bring over pumps and we would soak it beforehand. So we might be doing some firefighting of our own. Mr. Adventure fights fires. <laughs> he does that too. 
But I have to say I'm really proud of us for taking fire protection safety measures for the past few months, like seriously. I think it will pay off. Me too. We're obviously keeping optimistic and hoping that we don't have to deal with the fires in general, but if they do come here, we've done our best. And luckily there's like a solid road between us and that side of the canyon, That's true. you know? That's true. So there's Amen. Bon appetit. Bon provecho. What do they say here? Bon appetit. Our Portuguese friends, can you tell us how do we say bon appetit in Portuguese? Bon appetit. Bon appetit. That confused. sounds Italian. I'm That's something confused. Luca would say. Yeah, Liu taught us. Anyways, <laughs> we're going to enjoy our grub. That evening, we did our best to stay vigilant but not overwhelmed by the unknowns that may or may not lie ahead. They say that worrying is like praying for something you don't want to have happen, happen. So, with hopeful and guarded hearts, we did our best to digest and rest soundly that night, while also thinking of and praying for everyone being affected by the fires. And of course, for our brave and heroic Bomberos. Good morning, friends. We, we awoke to smoky skies. Yeah. The last we heard, there was a front heading towards this direction. And the wind had switched directions and was heading exactly towards us. For like the whole day, that was gonna be the concern. But right now and overnight, it was kind of at a standstill, just like swirling and not really moving, which it's was calm. to our advantage. Yes. And the firefighters' advantage. But it's actually been pretty confusing trying to figure out where to go for the most recent updates. Do we look yeah. in the Facebook groups? Do we look in the community thread? You know, if we're really lucky to have such a kind and like connected community here. Everyone's really supportive and we're just writing back and forth, sharing articles, sharing things that we find. Yeah, I'd have um, to say a lot of the articles seem like there's a bit of a couple hour delay to them and some stories are just generalized they're not really specific so for us on the ground we don't really know what's going on that's why yeah. the drone is our eyes in the sky <laughs> but we do have some really wonderful friends who are yeah. with the GNR and so we wrote them just saying that we were thinking about them because yeah. we know that the Bomberos are working their hearts and souls out yeah. and so are the GNR. The GNR is closing off streets, keeping people out of certain areas that could be harmful and giving updates. Or evacuating people who yeah. need evacuated. But Julio gave us the best news this morning. Yeah. I told him this is the best news in the world today. Yeah, because we we're getting ready to pack up. We were getting ready to pack up. We were getting ready to go down to the mill and move everything from the old portion of the home, which has the wooden roof, at least like mm -hmm. the kana on the inside and then the wooden stilts. We were gonna move it all to the new part of the home and because that section has cement ceilings. Yeah, which is something we need to do anyways and organize. So, yeah. but we didn't expect be... to do it in this chaotic oh, manner. Okay, so here he wrote, is dead the fire. The fire is dead. <laughs> that feels so good to read. But we just wanted a little bit more clarification. So we asked, is this all of the fire fronts? And he wrote, let's wait till 12 p.m. That will be the best hour to see. So we have at this yeah. point, it is, what time is that? Almost 10 o'clock. So two more hours. Okay, okay, wow. All I know is this definitely gave us a taste of what a fire in our area close to our land and potentially coming right through here feels like so yeah and many members of our community agree not to leave until yeah. it's actually like quite pressing to leave because yeah. if you leave and like a little ember falls you can easily put out that flame yeah. but if you're not here to do that that little tiny flame could turn into something bigger and then it's, you know, putting your neighbors at risk. So it's almost like the community our duty. works together. Yeah. yeah. To protect each other. And unfortunately we don't even have a fire extinguisher. I'm yeah. ashamed to say that. I mean we did a wonderful no, we job. Do. We do, we do. Oh, in the camper. We man. have a little one in the camper. Like this big. Like this big. Yeah. We were told we need the six kilo fire extinguisher, so that is on our priority list to purchase soon. Yeah, we want to buy two of them. We just honestly haven't really known where to go and then our friend told us where to go and then we haven't been able to get there so if you guys have seen me doing fires in the past the days i could get the permits for i would always have like a water. five gallon bucket of water sitting around two of them just in case so that 
served its purpose when we needed it most, but a fire extinguisher would be really handy to have. Oh, but man, oh man, am I feeling grateful. I'm feeling so grateful, I think <sighs> I could cry. Yeah. Oh, that is the best news ever. We really had been in a conundrum because it was like, do we stay, do we leave? I couldn't Calling sleep. friends. I could sleep, but my, my all of my sleep was, dear God in heaven, please protect us. Father God in heaven, please protect us. <laughs> like it was some variation, <laughs> just repetitive. If I woke up, it was just that, you know? That is what allowed me to stay calm and have any form of rest last night. I told Brittany I woke up once in the middle of the night. I looked at the clock and it was 3.33.31. Three is my lucky number. And I love the time 3.33 because it's the only time where you can have the same number as the number. <laughs> Think about that one. Man, you're going to love March 3rd, 2023. <laughs> mm -mm. That's four threes. Mm. You know what I mean? March uh, anyways, guys, <sighs> oh, we're feeling silly. We're feeling happy relieved. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna have some coffee and cereal. <laughs> we love you. Oh, okay, two more hours. We can't forget, you know. So it's only been an hour, but we have an update on the Fogo's PT app. It has officially been announced that the fire is in resolution. Can you see that? It's a green flame. That means we are safe. And oh, man, there's not much time to prepare and it's about everything that you do before fire season. And in a past episode, Drew and I were considering how to redo the roof in the old portion of the mill. Currently, it's using some wood beams and we have the tree trunks in there that the city hall said needs to be replaced with either steel or concrete. But we were actually gonna have him reuse some of the wood things. But after this experience, Drew and I have decided that we want to go all concrete, cement, no wood, no wood in the roofs. We would feel that much more confident in these kinds of a situation. So that was actually really key in making the right decision now because we are in negotiations with our future roof guy. Whew, but what an adrenaline rush this all was. I'm exhausted. I like haven't been able to do normal things and we've just been writing family and friends just letting them all know that we are safe now and man oh man does it feel good to be the bearer of good news and what's crazy about fires is that many of them like these wildfires are caused by humans it's an interesting experience for us but as our earth gets warmer and fires more prevalent designing a land for fireproofing is like my greatest occupation right now. We're so grateful to say that we were safe this time and we will know what to do so that hopefully in all of the future forevers, we will always be safe, us and our magical mill here. So stay safe, friends. <laughs>